Hello everyone, my name is Marisha. And as you can see, today's topic is who is leading you? Because that is something you have to be mindful of. Like, what is leading me? What are or what is my motive behind why I'm being led to do this? Like, why do I feel an urgency? Why do I need to do this? Why I have to do what I am doing? What's the purpose? What effect can it have on me and others? How can God see me? Like to consider, like we have to reflect. That's one thing the Lord didn't give us a mind just to, excuse me, just to roam and be idle. What do I mean? But you eight hours video gaming, eight hours to 20, 10 hours YouTube, Netflix, Pure Flix, plus eight, your PlayStation, video gaming, your virtual world, growing dragons, growing plants, candy crush, like the Lord didn't give you time for you to be idle in your mind. And especially if you see a Christian, you can't do this. Like, even myself, like I know there's sometimes I have to delete the app, little game apps on my phone because I will get idle. I will get idle. And I remember, like, I, 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 I can handle it. I can handle it. I'm a Christian. Like, you know, I've been sick for this much time. I go, I download an app. Let, let it be a word game. Marisha will be there for hours. Uh, it's not putting people and playing with the, the little um, the automated system. That's how, like, like, how vain and mundane and idle can I get? Like, lazy, slothful, and busyness. Like, that's how... I really was wasting time and you can be in that same category and you don't feel like that's just nothing like this is how I get my mind off of things I'm bored I need something to do yeah but you're wasting time it's vain it's sin like what I mean by sin it's just idle we're putting it before God that's why it's considered a sin I'm not saying it's sin to play games like you can do it but if it's taking the time of the Lord this hobby this sport this thing you do it's taking more time you can spend, like, because you go to work eight, eight hours a day. Just for instance, you get you, do, you sleep majority of time. And what do you do with the rest? Oh, I have my family time, my wife time, my husband time, you know, spend time. I volunteer here, I do this, you know, I exercise, I go to the gym. Like, okay, you're 45. If you're doing three, six hours in the gym, like, that's vanity. Oh, I need a super body, I need this. Like, just control. And have self control on what you eat. It's simple as that. It's hard. Like even myself, I, I know it's hard. Like, me, candy, sweets. People who know me, Marisha. Marisha loves her sweets. She really does. And there's time, I go overboard with it, and I get tooth pains, tooth aches. I get, I got problems in my sleep. I got issues. Like oh, like my tooth cracked the other the other a few weeks ago. I forgot. I went to the dentist. Cause I was supposed to get some teeth, my fillings and cavities in. God, I've been going because I got scared. My last experience was horrible, but I was like, you know what? My teeth are hurt. Let me go to the dentist. Thank God they don't hurt anymore. And I went, I went there like, oh, you need a little, the, they need to check all my teeth, basically. You know, that's how they, they, they do that. So I got a, I got a physical exam, whatever. I'm not sure. Screening. I'm like, I took all my teeth and I realized, oh wow, it, it's a lot of work that needs to be done. And because of what I eat, like, I love my sweets. I love my sleep. I didn't floss. And teeth I caught it. And now the space for candy gets stuck since stuck in their cookies and all that stuff over time. It gets stuck. You think you're brushing fine. Like, I'm brushing good, but in between was horrible. And over time I had bad cavities, the fillings needed, root canal, like oh, like a lot of work needs to be done. Like horrible maintenance, yeah. What I bring that up? People do that with their faith. You know, you should. You need to maintain your salvation. You have to endure to the end. You have to keep going. Like, but I'm going. I'm going. Okay, you're going. Like, what effort or what measures are you doing to maintain it to keep it? Like, what? Like for me, what measures what I was doing to keep my teeth better? Like, well, I did it because. Cause I still like I still like my sweets. I, I still well, it's helping me. Cause I used to eat bags of candy in a day. Now I can sporadically do it. But I'm telling you, it was horrible. It was really bad for me. I had learned the hard way. My tooth cracked. Cause it just told me my teeth got so bad. It's to the point 
eat they said not to eat nuts and i was like okay no nuts i haven't eaten nuts in a long time and then i saw some candy i said i buy one get one like i must get this buy one get one for the sharing size peanut m m's totally forgot that it's just like it's buy one get one this is rare this is sharing size i got to get this so i, I did that and i was like you know let me be wise and eat this candy sporadically not 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 consume the whole bag in one day so i'll get a little ziploc bag and put a few every few every few times a week and right where the bag is almost done because i've been eating this bag by myself i share those around me if they wanted some but majority of me 90 percent of the items i ate it as i'm eating I'm like, this is, uh, this is a rare texture for m and this must be a really burnt m and because it's pretty hard. And I'm biting, I'm biting, and all, all the chocolate is done, the peanuts are broken down. I'm like, this is weird. And I took it out, spit it out, it was my tooth. I said, what? And I'm like, you know, your tongue, just time trying to figure out where, which, which, which tooth was it, found it like right here, like, oh, yeah, poor maintenance. Or you, because I was there, I had the water floss. I go, Lord, I got the water floss, Lord. I got the self filling kit, Lord. I got the toothache pain, this so you know, the clove oil to numb out my gums when the tooth pain. I got all the procedures, I know the remedies. I got it, I got it. I can still eat my candy, I can still eat it. I won't have pain. No, the Lord showed me otherwise, like, no. Take care of what you do for the Lord. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I have to, I have to take care of it. And it, it, and it gets hard. Like, well, I have to get rid of this. Like, yes, you have to get rid of Like, it's harming you. It's harming you. And you have to understand that there's some things in your life that's harming you. Not just your diet, your relationships, what you do, the mentalities, your personality, what you believe is causing poor maintenance to your faith, to your salvation, to your walk with Christ Jesus and you may say no I know I could I can get the bones I can I could get the meat and leave the bones I know I know how to do it I could no you don't I remember time my aunt because someone was giving her fish I love fish a lot but this fish she had had bones and a tiny little fish so in those cases she would fry the fish because since there's so many bones in there I would just fry it and it will be easier just to pick out the bones. So my aunt told us, hey, me and my cousin, if any of you guys swallow a bone, you cannot eat no more fish. And I'm just, how old am I? I'm seven, eight, nine years old. And not seven, like eight, nine years old. And my mind, I'm like, I know, I know, I know how to do this. My mom, because my mom at that age, my mom stopped picking out the fish bones for my in my food she did for my brother but not for me like i know how to do this like and i love fried fish like come on like i can handle this once i'm eating this fish the bone got caught in my throat and i'm talking all raspy like this and my voice gone because that bone was literally on the corner of my throat and what happened me loving fish i did not tell my aunt i had a bone so my cousin, she thought I was lying. You're lying, like I'm serious. It was a bone stuck. Like it was a good three, five days. This fish bone stuck on the side of my throat. I could feel it. It hurts. And each day my auntie made fried fish. I'm eating that fish like in this bone. Like, it didn't stop me. Like yeah, that's how bad you can be with sin. Like you keep doing something. It's harming you. This guy, you're in fornication. You're sleeping with him. Or this woman, you're sleeping with. They're not married. Like sleep for marriage. But I love him. He loves me. Like, you're harming your body. You're harming your soul. This is something like the Lord. Remember this, this sin? Like this, it's in a sin, yes. But there's some high, like, higher consequences. Some like, higher level that's defilement. And you can mix you up. And that's one of them. And you do that stuff. It's causing harm to your soul. Not just your soul. Your emotions. Your mind. Like, it strips you like it's defilement it's stripping you up 
I don't know if you ever saw if you see a prostitute before. They don't look normal. They're like they look used up or messed up. And that's how you or your soul is becoming that. Well, I'm not like that. There's only this one person. Yeah, this one person is tearing up your soul. Because you're giving access. You're giving the enemy access to your body. You they like to curse. And you know why you can't you can't hold all your teeth. You have, you have all these t teeth issues. We are always sick. You can't bite your tongue. A lot of people always treat me this way because see, what you say will come out your mouth. And you always you curse people while you're cursing yourself. Does it make sense? The same mouth can bless the Lord and it's not going to curse me. Like, don't work that way. And people do this type of thing. Like, what? Well, I need money. I need money to pay my bills. I got to do the lottery. Like, what? Just go to work. Stop calling off work. Stop being so lazy. Go. Do, go do something. You have responsibility. Yeah. But don't put it before the Lord. I need more money. I need I, I, I need more money. So you pull you pull doubles, you get a second job, a part time second job, and now you're doing lottery because you need more money because of greed, in in your heart and your mind you feel like you, I will never be broke like my mom. I will never be like this. I will never be like the black people. I'll never be like the white. I'll never be like so whatever you try to run away from. But where is that gonna lead you to? Like. You were born on this earth for nothing. And you're that way next. Well, I was born in a rich family. Your family's going to die. The, your money, the money's going to rot. In a few years, your money's not going to, it's not going to worth anything. Your efforts, your reputation, it's not going to be remembered. Somebody else is going to take over and just mess it all up and take the credit for it. So this is why the Lord tells us to not put so much into these things or engage in these types of sins or lies or cause discord among the brethren, meaning you invited Christ to cause issues with other people. You slander their reputation to the point that brother or this sister can't even talk to them the same way because how they annoyed you, how they made you upset, how they did this, and it's not fair. Like you, like do you understand what you're doing at this point? You must not know you, and you must not care about what God thinks. And you better not get upset when somebody said the same exact thing about you, but even worse. You're going to be reaped the whirlwind. Real people don't consider these things. And two, the Lord's going to judge you. Well, one, the Lord's going to judge you for it. Two, it's going to come back for you. It's going to come right back. Not reincarnation. Time for karma. You know, it's good. what you sow is what you're going to reap. So what you put in there is going to grow out of it, okay? So, and people get confused. Like, it's, I don't deserve do because I'm a good person. Like, no, you're not. You're evil. You're greedy. You're perverted. You're rude. You you feel entitled. You feel like you deserve the whole world. You should be treated as queen, but you're like little Miss Piggy. You're like what other rude, some rude character. I don't know. Momo oh, Jojo, whatever, just evil villain, horrible person, just horrible fan fantasy because you're fake, fake personality because you want to be aggressive, you want to be tough, you want people to respect you and treat you this way, but you don't deserve it. And that's what pride do to you. I deserve this, but no, you don't. You deserve death, okay? Hellfire, death, that's what you deserve. But no, I'm a good person. People understand. You don't. Know, people don't know. No one has walked into my shoes. Okay, your shoes are. It's been a tough place to be. Sad things. You. I mean. You probably the top. Ten percent of people in your whole nation, how bad your life was in your upbringing and what you went through. I guess, but it's nothing the Lord can't heal or fix. He can. Make you forget those memories and heal you from them. But no, you want you want to justify. You do you want you want to hold on to these because this this stuff made me. It shook me from the, who I am. These are my bad room scars. This is what I came through. This is what I went through. But you have to forgive. Six times seven. You have to love. Like what? I would never. I can't. You you can't. When you see a person, you can't even. There's no, there's no peace in your eyelids there. Say like that. You're like, you think you could. I'm a fine person to come. Um, like, something wrong, something wrong in your eye. 
So don't you throw something around your ear, tapping. Like you can't even be normal around the person. That's how bad the situation is and their memories and what the subject comes about. Oh, don't say this, don't say that. And you're ready just to lash out, get angry, sad, and dip. You guys don't can heal you from that. But think about it, people want healing from it, but don't want to forget. Or they want healing, but they don't want to commit. And that's the problem. People want all the goodness and blessings of God and transformation and growth. But what efforts are you putting into it? Where's the righteousness? Where's the godly? Where's the holiness? Where's the obedience? Where's the faith? Where's the love? Where's the honesty? That's what the Lord is looking for. But no, it's hidden behind the Google research. I remember just being on a computer. I used to be on a computer a lot. And different sites social media sites and all that and I learned about different religions at the time I see people post to hear and say this stuff and then now they go if somebody tries to go back and forth people on the internet they, they quote the same exact stuff especially the black population concerning the bible king james he's gay and then this or that issue like this religion and this people like it's the same we all sound the same before people would copy and paste it now it's become a belief, something people believe, like puffed up information, like knowledge, all this is not going to do nothing for you. Have you do your research? Do you know your history? Oh, you this know, historical facts and this, 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 you know where this came from, my ancestors or culture. You've been on Google, right? Yeah, you sound like it. You sound just like Google right now. That's your belief. You're not even a Christian no more. No, I asked to my research. I just find out what's the real and what's the fake. And now you want to make scripture. Oh, I, you know, you got to get the terrorists amongst the week. You know, you got false prophets, you know. But you see, you spent 26, 26 hours, no sleep, on research and questions regarding that the anger vents out of your heart. It's just really bad. It's got like... Tell me this. People wasting time. People planning on with the Lord. And now there's no Jesus, there's no God, you know? And it really brings it brings back to your culture, my roots. Go, yeah, go back to your roots. Where does it, where does it go back to all the way? You don't even want to go back to your roots where it really came from, back to Adam and Eve. Yeah, back to them. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's the roots you really want to know, like, what's really in you, what's your real background? Yeah, rebellion. Confusion, disobedience, pride, fear, confusion, deception. That's what that's yeah, that's your cultural, that's your in your DNA. Let me look at my look at my pedigree, look at my, my family tree. Yeah, yeah, go back. Satan is your father, you liar. You wanna justify sin, nobody's perfect. Like, yeah, mm, confused, deceived, it's there. It is there, it is there. And if you're not dealing with these matters, Listen, hey, David, and you're like, Lord, search me. Try the rings in my heart. Let me know if there's any wickedness in me. Like, he is aware. Like, I know I messed up. I'm not, I am not, who I'm, I'm not doing what the Lord I'm supposed to do. But I need you to help me to where I need to be. So I'm basically, he wanted God's heart. Man, after God's own heart. That is David's reputation. That's the true Christian. Because only the pure heart was to God. Blessed are the merciful, those are the peacemakers. God, you're blessed. You probably say I'm blessed. You're not even a peacemaker. You don't have a pure heart. You're not patient. You're not, you don't forgive. You don't love. Like, no. People are over here plagiarizing the Bible and want to discredit God. Like, that's from the Lord knows me. Like, no, it's not. It's from my favorite person, speaker, and then it's such a powerful person. People are full quoting the Bible. No, no, it's not the Bible. See, confusion, deception, I'm telling you, my people, you need to get you need the Lord to sanctify your heart and mind. He can help you. He can he lead you by his Holy Spirit. Because when you do that, you let it led by the flesh. You know, flesh is nothing good in the flesh. It's lying, prideful, greedy, aggressive, afraid, fearful, just anger, depression, suicidal, sickness, curse, just messed up, horrible, nothing good, leading to hell. 
but if you walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith. God, this is what the Lord is calling self control, sound like. Like, this is what the Lord has given us love. He has given you these things, given us these things, access to His Holy Spirit. He's the comfort, He's the teacher, going to teach you all things, going to edify you and teach you all things. You have to believe what he's saying, what's he doing. If not, there's going to be some issues for you in the future concerning your walk and faith in God. You're going to reach to a point. It's called a stumbling block or hidden air dishonesty, things you never addressed. And if the Lord clearly make it known and shed, like, shed upon, but you, I'm, God know my heart. I'm saved. God, only God can judge me. Church, I'm the church. You only, you only need four walls to go to church. Okay, okay uh, King James, he's gay. He this. Uh, oh, that's the white man religion. That's the, that's the black man. See, that's the, see, poor people in religion. We've been helping like inf that information blocking your salvation, hardening your heart, making you far from God, blind. Well, Jesus is deaf and blind, and not in the way of unbelief. Meaning, like you know what. People are messed up. They're going to do messed up things. Uh, I'm aware. I'm still going to die for them. Even in their sin, like, Jesus died for you. Even in your sin, if you're even born, he died for you. I understand, like, you know what? I do love you. I want you to be restored. But you have a choice and an option to do so. And it's by your words. Like, yes, God, I believe you. And, and he said a sinner's prayer. No. It's daily obedience. Picking up the cross. Denying yourself. Working for the Lord. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It takes dedication, it takes effort. And if you're not doing so, that you're gonna have some bad, bad issues, you're gonna have bad problems. But the Lord is calling people to go higher where people are fine though they are. It does seem right unto the man, but the end thereof is death. You know, you might do my research, you know. You know, I did this, you know, this culture, this these people, these Yeah, and iniquity you were found. Like your forefathers, evil. People are evil. That's why God is here. There's the evil force and there's a good force, like righteous, holy. Evil and holy, like, that's what's going on. The Holy Spirit of God or the evilness of the flesh, the laziness, the murder, the hatred, the prejudice, the pride, the entitled, no mercy, not forgiving, hatred. Like, what's really going on? Like, I thought you were a Christian. Why? Are you acting? Why are you so political? You think black lives matter. You think white lives matter. Like, hey, that's not the message for Jesus Christ. He said, go preach the gospel throughout the land. Baptize those in the Father's name, is Father, Son, and the Spirit. Cast out devils, heal the sick. Like, hey, I command you to do these things. So the Lord's calling us to do, but no people out here are afraid. Sitting home to convince and believe that they're the church by themselves. And just deceived. And the people leading you, deceiving you. Blood on their hands because they hate God. And they're teaching you how to hate God to fold the devil. Teaching you to be too fold the devil. Do you want to be that? No. You want to be holy? Yes. Obey. You want to be like Jesus? Yes. Mercy is kingdom and righteousness. That's what you have to do. And that takes a daily decision. It takes willingness and intentionality. Like, hey, God. I am this way. I need help to overcome this thing. Not my mind, my heart, it's all over. Or it's on this one thing, and this one thing is not you, Lord. Like, bring it up to him. Like, bring it. Like, God is your friend. He's your father. Like, talk to him. He created us to fellowship with him. But you have to have the right garments and the right heart to stand before him. Not anybody here, the Lord goes, I hate those who don't. They touch the mountain, they go past the line, the gate, they're gonna die surely, or any animal. Hey, Moses, go tell them again, like they know it. Go tell them again what to do. Tell them, hey, see what yourself, don't do, cleanse yourself and stay away from the mountain slash the thing they built. So they're like, that be you. Be in position to obey, be in position to agree. Let your answer be yes and amen. Because Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's looking for a spotless and blemished church. 
but those who are led by the spirit the good led by the spirit they are the sons of god so after you receive the spirit you must be born again because god is a spirit and once you're reborn again you're cleansed from the water you are being born again your sins are washed away all that it's a brand new life once you're out which represents the resurrection of jesus christ the power it took to do that and the power is taken for us to be holy and overcomers and by one man save the whole world but many are called few are chosen so that's one thing to know too like hey god called out you but not everybody going to heaven like oh. yeah i'm so sure this is approved seek the lord be faithful be obedient in the small stop complaining stop murmuring and obey agree accept and love the lord with all your heart mind soul and strength and that's what we draw tonight